Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I created some Jessica Rabbit realness for you, so if you're interested in how I created this look, keep on watching. So as always, I'm using something hydrating to prime my face. I'm starting to move away from like super matte products and starting to use more hydrating products because I just think it looks better in like photos and stuff like that and in real life. So to get my brows that bright red color, I'm using a lip liner to fill in my brows. And um, just be careful when you use uh, reds and pinks on your face because they do stain. So I did walk around with pink eyebrows for a couple of days, but it was fine. I filled these in like I would with a regular brow pencil, and um, I use this fully just like I would with a regular brow color. I use this brow technique when I have hair colors that just don't look right with uh, brown brows. So this really helps like pull everything together when your brows match your hair color. It's especially handy when you're trying to rock a fashion color. And if you don't have the exact shade of liner for your hair, you can always pat in an eyeshadow because the, the crayon eyeliners are waxy so the eyeshadow sticks very well. I prime my eyes and I'm packing my first color into my crease. When I'm using a tacky base, I always start with my darkest colors in my crease and as I go up towards the brow, I start to use lighter colors to help give it a blown out smoky look. Now in order to help deepen the crease, I start packing in a purple. I don't know why I keep using purples because purples give me the most trouble, but I love it when I do my looks, so I'm gonna keep using it. You're probably gonna see how tragic this look started to get because of the fact that I decided to use purple, but I somehow got it to work towards the end, but like towards the very, very end. Everything about this look was working up like for my whole like crease into my brow bone part like all the purples blended pretty fine It only really started to get bad after I cut my crease Also shout out to colored rain for making such a pigmented palette like each time I went to go apply the shadow It was so bright and pigmented and that color payoff was amazing And if you notice if I sound kind of tired in this voiceover, it's because it's 3am. Why I chose 3am to do a voiceover? Simple. It's because everybody's sleeping. The dogs, my family, everybody is just quiet and I can get this voiceover done quickly when everyone is quiet. So when you use a tacky base, um, the color payout is amazing, but sometimes you're left with a line of demarcation between the different colors. So this is why you see me going back and forth and back and forth between the blue and the purple uh, to make sure that I blend out that line of demarcation as best as possible.
Here I'm cutting my crease with an undisclosed white base and I take the base and I put it on a very flat brush to give me the most precise cut for the crease. I'm so sorry I keep doing the most with my mouth when I'm recording these videos. I'm really trying to break the habit but sometimes when I just focus I really forget what I'm doing with the rest of my face. My mom even walked in while I was editing and she saw the footage and she was like you're doing the mouth thing like your dad does and I'm like yes, yes I am because you guys raised me. Now I have this habit I can't break. This is where things started to kind of take a turn for the worse when I was uh, putting color on my lid. Someone advised me that when working with purple it helps to lay down a blue base and then the purple on top so that's what I tried to do but I still struggled with weird patchiness because of the purple and I don't know I just don't know how to apply purple eyeshadow and I'm sorry for that but I'll learn eventually. And I'm not taking a jab at Colored Rain's eyeshadows. They have a really good eyeshadow formula. It's just for whatever reason, whatever purple I use, it just goes south. And it's probably because purple is very hard to formulate and it has nothing to do with the company itself. I don't know why I stress myself out with purple all the time. And you did right from the start. I tried so hard to make it work and it just refused to work. In an attempt to save it, I went back over the patchy bits with um, the base again and I blended it out with my finger to give myself a new canvas to work on versus trying to pack on shadows and moving them around. I kind of like the look of the blue in the corner of my lids, so I just packed on a blue on top of it and I left it before I tried to ruin it again with another shade of purple. So I filmed this about a month ago and I'm just now remembering how many times I actually did mess up on this look. Like this white liner that I'm using right now, I didn't use a detail brush small enough, so I did really bad on this part. Like I'm hesitating a lot to get the liner on, and when I do finally go for it, like it just went south. I get a decent amount of praise for the looks that I create but don't let the final product fool you guys because I do struggle a lot sometimes when I'm trying to create a look. So in an attempt to hide my other mistake, I went back with the white base and I kind of blended it in to the white liner so I could kind of work it into the rest of the eyeshadow look. I don't know. I was really trying here.
for some reason I didn't learn the first time and went back in with the white liner but it ended up working this time and I didn't mess up too bad so I'm gonna pat myself on the back for this one I still felt bad about the white liner not working out like it was supposed to the first time so I added some glitter on top of it to make myself feel better. I will always appreciate the Lit Cosmetics glitter base because it helps cut down the amount of time it would normally take applying glitter to a fine detail like that. Do you see how slow I'm going in now with the glitter? Because I was really not trying to mess up this last part of the eye look. I think out of all the felt tip eyeliners that I've used, the Fenty one is my favorite just because of the fact that I've had this eyeliner for about a year now and the tip has not dried out at all. Like it's still as wet and as pigmented as it was since the first time I used it. Now that I think about it, the Stila one also is another one that doesn't dry out as quickly as other eyeliners do. The Maybelline Snapscara is low-key slept on because it gives my lashes the same lengthening effect as the Benefit Bad Girl Bang Mascara, but for like a fraction of the price. Even though my head is the shape of an egg, I don't like contouring for real because I'm lazy so I just take a bronzer and I put it where I would contour. Since I'm 
The Amrezy highlighter is one of my favorites because it's very soft and natural, but you can still build it so it's blinding. My only issue with it is, is that the formula is so soft that it's very fragile in the pan. Like I dropped it and it just pops out. Even when I try to press it back in, it doesn't want to stay. It pops out all the time. So that's my only gripe with this highlighter. And to finish up the look, I popped on some 25mm eyelashes that I bought off of AliExpress because I love drama and Dress Like a Rabbit also love drama. So here we are. Oop, I almost forgot that Dress Like a Rabbit rocked a very bold red lip. So what's a better bold red lip than Fenty Beauty Stun Lip Paint in Uncensored? Because that is the boldest color I have in my collection. Just like a rabbit wore a bold glittery red dress, so I decided to add a little glitter to my lips just to embody her a little more. And there you have it, a Jessica Rabbit inspired look. This wig, I bought it off of Amazon and when I tried it on, a friend recommended that I do a Jessica Rabbit inspired look and here we are. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And yes, if you like my content, subscribe and I'll see you in the future. Thank you.